3.4%. Yes. The chain rule. Let's just think of the math. If I gave you this, dy du, and I said, can you multiply that by du dx? Just think of algebra and math. What can you do here? You can cancel the du's, right? Because on the top and the bottom, and you'll end up with what? dy dx. So now, earlier today we had a problem like something like this. I changed the power to the power of 50. Okay. And I said, can you find the derivative? Intentionally, I made the power high because if I made power 2, some of you use the FOIL method, simplify it and take the derivative. If I made it 3, you're probably still going to multiply it, or 4 even. Once it gets to a big number like this, you know you're not going to spend the time trying to factor it and take the derivative. So how do we take the derivative of a problem like this? That's where the chain rule comes in. Chain rule says, let me create a new variable. Let me let u equals x squared plus 3. So I made new variable. I called it u, and it's equal to what's inside the parentheses. That means I can write y now as what? u to the power of what? 50. The derivative of this, I'm using u and I'm using x. So the derivative of this will be called du dx. And what's du dx equal to here? What is the derivative of this? 2x. The derivative of this will not be called dy dx, will be called what? dy du, because using the u variable. And what's the derivative of this? 50 u to the power of 49, you got correct. I asked for y prime, which is what? dy dx. I can use that rule there. It says, you want to find dy dx? So dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. Do I know what dy du? We have it, right? 50 u to the power of what? 49 times, do I know du dx? 2x. The only problem is when we started the problem, there was nothing in the problem about u. We made that up. I made that up. I made it in red even so you get to see it. So let me change u back to x. So what is du dx equal to now, or dy dx? It's 50. In place of u, I'm going to write what? x squared, x squared plus 3 to the power of what? 49 times 2x. So I didn't have to multiply it 50 times. There's my answer. I'll try another one. You could 
like simplify that, right? Yeah, you can to what? 100x. Oh, I mean multiply these two? Yes. Yeah, if you want to make that 10, 100x times x squared plus 3 to the power of 49. But I, wa I want to keep that answer. I have interest in that answer in a few minutes. I'm going to come back to it. Here's another example. Y equals the cube root of 6x squared plus 3x. I want the derivative of that. Again, notice I can rewrite this as what? 6x squared plus 3x to what power? One third. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to let u equals what's inside the parentheses. And if I do that, I can write y now as what? u to the power of one-third. The derivative of this is what? du dx. That's the name of it. I mean, du d, uh, d is. This one is du dx. u and x. What's the derivative of this? What is the derivative of 6x squared? 12x. 12x, yes. And what's the derivative of 3x? 3. The derivative of this is called dy du. And what's the derivative u to the one-third, just like x to the one-third? Except we're using u instead of x. One-third u to the power of what? One-third minus the one. So negative two-thirds. Two yep. You subtract one from the power. You want to find dy dx? That's equal to dy du times du dx. Do I have these pieces, the two pieces? Yes. dy du is what? One third u to the negative two thirds. And what's du dx? 12x plus 3. And again, eventually you got to change that u back to x. You can't leave it as u. So that's one third. In place of u, we're going to write what? 6x squared plus 3x to what power? Negative 2 thirds times 12x plus 3. So the way that that's written now, the um, acceptable for the input for the homework or something like that? I'm not sure if they want you to change the negative exponent to positive. Yeah. That I can't tell you till we try it. I think they probably will take it. But if not, probably will be looking like this.
it might look like this if they don't want negative exponent. Because this comes to the bottom to make it positive exponents, two thirds, the one third, and this one on the top. I could actually factor a three out of this, right? Yep. Notice if you factor three out of the top, you can cancel that three. If you take a three, you have what? Four X plus one. Yep, that, and the threes will cancel. So they could leave it like this, or again, they could replace the two-thirds with the cube root, the cube root of 6x squared plus 3x squared. So I couldn't tell you which way they went there, so my gut feeling tells me they probably would have taken that one. Maybe they would have simplified that and made it 4 plus 1 times this. You know? Oh, I mean, remember we simplified that. We said that's what? 4x plus 1. If you don't like that 2 thirds, it's actually the cube root of 6x squared plus 3x squared. Again, this answer is not bad, but they probably divide it by 3 and leave it negative exponent. I really don't know how, which way they want it. You saw what I see is different than what you see on my software. Um, I like this answer because there's uh, something in the back of my mind I'm going to be bringing shortly. That's why I'm interested in that answer, just like I was interested in this answer. The reason I'm interested in them because there's a rule called the extended power rule or our book calls it the general power rule. It's the same section. I see in other books call it the extended power rule. Which says if you want to take the derivative, if you have a function uh, y equals u to the x, some function raised to a power, then the derivative of that is equal. It says take the power, move it to the front. I don't like U because we used U early. So let's use, use F here. F looks like it would be a nicer one. F of X to the power of N minus 1 times the derivative of F. Let's see what that means. See this problem here? It took us a full page to do. I'm going to do it in one step with this rule. Here's my problem. This is actually your function. This is your f of x. This is your n. What that rule is telling you, move the power to the front just like before and subtract 1 from the power. Isn't that what we did before when we had x to the n? The only difference here, you're not done with it. You need to multiply it by the derivative of this function. Notice times f prime. What's the derivative of x squared plus 3? Wasn't that 2x? Wasn't that the answer right here? 50 
x squared plus 3 to the power of 49 times the 2x in one step. The second problem we did, the cube root again, that took a full page here to do, or half a page at least up to here. I'm going to do that in one step. It was the cube root of 6x squared plus 3x. And I said, you can write that 6x squared plus 3x to what power? One third. The derivative of that, move the power to the front just like before. And you subtract one from the power. When you subtract one from one third, what's the answer? Negative two thirds times the derivative of what's on the inside. What's the derivative of this? Twelve x plus three. Was that the answer we came up with here? Can you see him? Look at that. In one line. So that's more popular than using the chain rule. But we use the chain rule to derive them, you know? So let's take a few examples using the extended power rule. I'll give you a few minutes to try it. Not too long because we don't want to leave that camera running. So I'll give you like 30 seconds to give it a try. Tell me what is the derivative. Take the power, move it to the front. There's the power. 3x minus 2x squared. Subtract 1 from the power. What's 3 minus 1? 2 times the derivative of what's on the inside. 3 minus 4x. Again, if you want to multiply these two and put them in the front, that's fine. Subtract one from the power. Oh, it's a square in I thought you said, oh, I thought that was 3x minus 2x. And I was just like 3x minus 2x squared, the whole thing cubed. Yep. Okay. Let's try another one. y equals negative 7 over. Two t minus three squared, and I want to find dy dt. So I'm using y and t here, not x. Now I know you might be thinking about the quotient rule, and that will work, but that's the long way of doing it. Because you can rewrite this negative seven times two t minus three to what power? Negative 2. The general power rule is used when the exponent is different than 1. That's when you want to use it. So if the power is negative number, if the power is a fraction, if the power is positive number, if it's not 1, you want to use the general power rule. And just like this, this was negative 7x to the negative 2. Don't we multiply these two numbers? 
we go what's negative 7 times a negative 2? That's positive 14. 2t minus 3 to what power? Minus 3. Minus 3, yes. Times the derivative what's on the inside. And what's the derivative 2t minus 3? 2. two. Again, you want to clean it? That's what? 28. 2t minus 3 to the negative 3. Again, if they don't like negative exponent, 28 over 2t minus 3 cubed. Now, sometimes the problem gets a little bit ugly or tough. So maybe I'll start on a new page here, because I'm probably going to need the whole page. I'll try to combine this section with last class, last video. Six x cubed minus four to the power of five times three x squared plus 8x to the power of 6. Now again, none of us probably going to multiply these 5 times. That's 6 times. Get the answer. Multiply them out. Good luck. You'll need a paper the size of this room. And there's a very good chance every one of us will have a different answer, including me. Probably none of us will have the right answer. We're going to keep our eyes closed, no distraction, we'll get the right answer. But we can use the power rule with the product rule. You have a multiplication. Remember the product rule when you have multiplications? So this is F and that's G. In the product rule, the first thing we identified f and g. What was the second step? Let's get their derivatives. What's the derivative f? And what's the derivative of g? So what's the derivative f? 18x squared. Nope, derivative f, this whole thing. Move the power to the front, yes. All of that, subtract 1 from the power, times the derivative of what's on the inside. What's the derivative of that? 18x squared. You can multiply the 5 with the 18. For now, I'll leave it. The next one, what's g sub prime? Take the power, move it to the front. Subtract 1 from the power. Times the derivative of what's on the inside. Which is what? 6x plus 8. Once I have F and F bar, G and G bar, I can find the answer, the derivative. It says the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first.
the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. What's f of x? 6x to the third <coughs> minus 4 to what power? Bless you. 5 times g bar. What's g bar? All of this, 6 times right small f times g bar boy it's ugly plus plus what g times f bar what's g 3x squared plus 8x to what power? 6 times f bar, which is what? 5 times 6x cubed minus 4 to the power 4 times the 18x. And you just better hope they don't ask us to simplify that answer. If they do, it'll be a little bit ugly. Well, actually, it's not that bad, not that ugly, if you want to simplify it. And the reason I say it's not that ugly, because notice you have this one here, and you have this one here. Can you see it? You have this one here, and you have it here. So we can factor stuff out. Out of these two, I can only take four of them because this has four, this has five. So if you want to simplify your answer, you can factor six x cubed minus four to the fourth power. You can take four of them out. Out of these, I can take five of them out. I can't take six. So if I factor these out, in the first group, what's left? One of these, the six, and that one. You could also take out a, a six. Yeah, eventually we will. Okay. Yep. Six x cubed minus four times the six times the six x plus eight. That's in the first group plus in the other group what's left one of these times what 5 times 18x so this one closes that one I'm just out of space there Notice the 18, I can divide it by 6. So you're right, I could take a 6 out. And that'll be 3 here. Yeah, that'd be 18x squared. 18, yes. Squared here. Yeah, I can pull a 6 out, then start multiplying these and look for like terms. So if I want to continue simplifying, sometimes I don't want to simplify, but I end up opening my big mouth. You go, uh oh, I should have just left it alone. If you take the 6 out, so what's left is this times that. I took the 6 out, it's sitting in the front. Plus, when you factor 6 out of this, what's left? 3. 18 divided by 6, 3. 3 times 5. 15x squared times 3x squared plus 8x. So you can foil these and collect like terms. Notice what's 6x times 6x cubed? 36x to the fourth, right? 
And here, what do you have? 45x to the fourth, so you can put them together. So you can multiply these and collect like terms. I don't want to leave it undone. The next, uh, the, the next group I'm going to do, I'm not going to simplify. I don't know. I honestly don't know. So if you foil this one, that's what? 36x to the fourth. 8 times 6 is 48. Twenty four X minus the thirty two. That's the first group. And this will be what? Forty five X to the fourth. Eight times fifteen. Is that one twenty? Eight times fifteen? Yeah. One twenty X cube. So I can collect like terms. I'm almost done with it. Again, this is really nothing to do with calculus at this point. What's 36 plus 45? Is it 81? What is 48 plus 120? Is that 168? X cubed minus 24X minus 32. And I'm not doing any more. That's it. I'm not factoring, trying to factor. And I'm happy with the answer. I should have stopped right here. And I said, this is perfect. But I opened my mouth and I had to go through it and very simplify it. Sometimes they give you problems where they tend to cancel out, you end up with a nice answer. I just made this one up in two seconds and you can see the answer shows. I didn't think about it. Yep. Yeah, you make a mistake. I can tell you, if I made a mistake with this, I will not be retracing this. I will throw the sheet in the trash. I'll grab another one because there's no way I'm going to spot that mistake. I'll just throw it away and redo the problem. Okay. Let's refresh your memory too. What is the derivative of sine of x? Cosine of x. Leave a space next to it. I'm only going to write them on top of each other intentionally. What's the derivative of cosine of x? Negative sine of x. What's the derivative of tangent x? What's the derivative of cotangent x? Negative. Yep. Yep, that's it. What's the derivative of secant x? Secant x tangent x. What's the derivative of cosecant of x. Negative cosecant x cotangent x. All the ones begin with the letter C, they will have a negative answer. What's the derivative of e to the x? This is what we did last time. Well, today we're going to modify them a little bit. What about this is not x? This is x squared, 5x, 7x. So here's what the rule is saying. The derivative 
we'll do some examples shortly. I just want to write it. Of sine, instead of x, this is a function of x, like we'll call it u. u is a function of x, could be x squared plus 3. u could be 5x minus 7. The derivative of that will be what? Cosine of u times u sub prime, times the derivative in what you have right there. You say, how come you didn't do that before? What's the derivative of x? Zero. Try again. One. one. That's why we didn't use that before, because the derivative of x is one. So we didn't have to use that. What's the derivative of cosine of u? Negative sine u times u sub prime, or du dx. What's the derivative of tangent u? Is secant squared u times u sub prime. Just like this, we're just adding u sub prime to it. What's the derivative of cotangent u? Negative cosecant squared u times u sub prime. What's the derivative of secant u? Is secant u tangent u times u sub prime? You always add the u sub prime. What's the derivative of cosecant u? Negative cosecant u cotangent u times u sub prime. And the last one, the derivative of e to the u. It's e to the u times u sub prime. So it's the same set of rules, but it's no longer just sine of x. It might be sine x squared minus 5, e to the 4x plus 3. So I'm going to practice with these right now and see what will happen. I'll wait till you finish writing. Now if I have time, I can freeze the video. You know, combine the videos together. That's too much work for me. So I'll let it run now. Sure? Yeah. Okay, still a couple more people. All set Okay. So let's see how that works. Again, I'll try to put them side by side to show you the difference. What's the derivative of sine x? We said that's what? Cosine x. Good. But now what's the derivative of sine 2x so cosine 2x times the derivative of this what's the derivative 2x 2 so you can write that 2 times the cosine of 2x So it looks the same as this, except we need to multiply by the derivative of this. What's the derivative 
of cosine x squared plus 3. Negative sine, negative sine three. x squared plus 3 times, the, times the derivative of this, which is what? 2x. So you can rewrite that negative 2x sine x squared plus 3. What's the derivative of e to the x squared plus 3x? This is u here, derivative e to the u. It says e to the u, that stays the same, times the derivative of this. And what's the derivative of that? 2x plus 3. So you end up with 2x plus 3 in parentheses times e to the power of x squared plus 3x. What's the derivative of e to the negative x? Um, e to the negative x squared plus 3. E to the negative x times the derivative of negative x, which is what? Negative 1. Negative 1. So you can write that, what? Minus e to the negative x. What's the derivative of tangent 6x plus 1? Derivative tangent is secant squared 6x plus 1 times the derivative what's inside that times 6 here. That'll be 6 times the secant squared of 6x plus 1. Let's put some of these rules together, mix them together. Since we're having fun. You guys having fun yet? Of course. Good. Notice these two are not the same. Intentionally, I made sure one is 4x minus 5, one is x squared plus 3, which means you can't simplify them. So we have to use what rule? Quotient rule. F is the top, G is the bottom. And I won't simplify it. F is the top, that's cosine 4x minus 5. G is the bottom. Tangent x squared plus 3. The quotient rule. What's the derivative f? Derivative f is what? I mean derivative cosine is what? Negative sine, Negative sine yes. 
4x minus 5 times the derivative of what's on the inside, which is what? 4. 4. So if I simplify that, that's negative 4 sine 4x minus 5. Derivative of tangent is what? Secant squared. Secant squared, so g sub prime equals secant squared x squared plus 3 times the derivative of what's on the inside, which is what? 2x. 2x. So if you clean it, that's 2x times secant squared. What was I saying? Low times high? D high? Low D high? The quotient rule. The derivative of f of x divided by g sub x. Low times D high. Low is the bottom. Low D high. Derivative of the top, the high. Minus high D low. all over the square of law. Law means the bottom, law d high, law at the bottom times the derivative of the top, the high, minus high d law, all divided by the square of law. Now plug in the numbers or what we have, not numbers, here we have expressions. So what's g sub x? Tangent x squared plus 3 times the derivative f negative 4 sine 4x four minus 5 minus f of x cosine 4x minus 5 times the derivative of g, which is what? 2x secant squared x squared plus 3 all divided by the square of law, which is tangent squared now x squared plus 3. I'm not simplifying anything, leave it alone. It looks beautiful. Bless you. Okay. Now, hold it, okay. Notice a lot of that stuff is old stuff. We're just adding to it. But in a few minutes, you'll see some new stuff. So you come in and say, oh, that's my final exam. Uh, y equals the natural log of x. Find dy dx. I 
Again, some of you might know the answer to this. But I'm going to derive it based on the stuff we just learned. Y equals the natural log of X. So what I'm going to do, do E to the power of both sides. It's an equation. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do the same thing to the other side. E, the natural log, they're the inverse of each other. They cancel each other out. You end up with X. Just like the natural log of E to the X is always X, E to the natural log of X is always an X. Because they are the inverse of each other. Now let's take the derivative. What's the derivative e to the y? e to the y times dy dx. Remember u sub prime? e to the u is e to the u times u sub prime. Well here, I'm using y. Derivative e to the y, it's e to the y times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. Equals, what's the derivative x? One. Can you solve for dy dx? Isn't that one over e to the y? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is y equal to? ln of x. One over e to the ln of x. And guess what's e to the ln of x? 1 over x. So for those people who took calculus, you probably remember the derivative of ln of x is what? 1 over x. So add that to the list of rules we have to memorize. box there. In a few minutes, I'm going to take a snapshot of all the important ones. And what about if that's not x, that's a u? You want to take a crack at it? Since you just saw what happens to all these problems? If this is not x, that's a whole expression, a function of x. It's 1 over u times what? u sub prime. Or you can write that u sub prime over u. That's another one. An example, what's the derivative? of the natural log of 6x minus 3. This is u. The 6x minus 3 is u, so it's 1 over that times the derivative of this. What's the derivative of 6x minus 3? 6. So you can write that 6 over 6x minus 3. If you want to factor 3 and simplify it, you can divide each one of them by 3. What's the derivative? of the natural log of cosecant x. So I put them together, keep bringing them. One over cosecant times the derivative cosecant, which is what? Negative cosecant of x, 
cotangent of x. Now, if you simplify that, Yep, negative cosecant x, cotangent of x. And what's going to happen to the cosecant? Cancel each other out, and you end up with negative cotangent of x. So a problem like this, I'm sure they're going to ask you to simplify it, because it's not that bad to simplify. What do you multiply by negative 1, right? Uh, what do you mean negative 1? First step. One divided by cosecant x. One over cosecant is the derivative natural log of u. It's one over u times the derivative of u. U is the prime. So this one is the derivative of this. Just like if you have ln of sine of x. The derivative of that. So this is u, so it's 1 over this times the derivative of this. What's the derivative of sine of x? It's cosine of x. So when you clean it, that's cosine of x over sine of x. What's cosine over sine? cotangent of x. Still need it, anyone? Still writing? There's a few more rules in that section. And that is, I'll put them here. We know the derivative e to the x, right? Of e to the x is what? e to the x. We know the derivative of e to the u is what? e to the u times u bar, so u bar times e to the u. What about that number is not e? What about that number was a to the x? Like 5 instead of e. It was 5 to the x. It's going to be similar to this with minor changes to it. If that was e to the x, the answer is going to be what? e to the x. But the, if this is a to the x, it's going to be a to the x. The only difference, we need to multiply by the natural log of a. So the natural log of a, because it's not e, it's the natural log of a times a to the x. I'll give you an example in a minute. And if that's not x, if that was a u there, of a to the u, it is the natural log of a times e to the u times u bar. What do I mean by a to the x? Could it be a to the u, not e to the u? Natural, oh, a to the u, thank you. That's a, not e. What's the derivative of 5 to the x? According to this one, ln of 5 times 5 to the power of x. What's the derivative of 7 to the x? ln of 7 
times 7 to the x. What's the derivative of 9 to the x squared minus 3? Now that's this one. So it is the natural log of 9 times the derivative of that, which is 9 x squared minus 3 times the derivative of what's inside that. What's the derivative of x squared minus 3? 2x. What is the derivative of 17 to the cosine of x? I keep bringing the trick back. Uh, ln of 17. 17 to the cosine of x times the derivative of this. Derivative of cosine is what? Negative sine of x. So you can make the minus sign move it to the front if you want to. Two more rules, then we're done. <coughs> Bless you. We just did the derivative of the natural log of x. Remember that one? It's 1 over x. And if that was a u, it's 1 over u times u prime, or you can write that u prime over u. Well, the natural log is log base what? Ten. Try again. Natural log. log base e. So what about if it's not e? If that number log base 5, log base 7. So here's the, the change to that. The derivative of log base a of x. The base could be anything. It doesn't have to be E. Just like the natural log would be 1 over X, except we need to make an adjustment to that ln of A. And again, if this was a U, be u sub prime over u normally with the adjustment of ln of a. That's a u in case you can't read it. Examples. What's the derivative log base 3 of x. Just like if this was the natural log of x, it would be 1 over x. What's the adjustment? You got to multiply by the natural log of 3. What's the derivative? Log base 20 of x. 1 over x times what? Natural log of 20. Natural log 20 in the bottom there.
the a to the x and the log, they never really use that often. So sometimes I still have to go back and peek because I forget what the rule is. But the other ones, we use them all the time. But uh, the log of a or a to the x, once in a while we use them. What's the derivative? Log base 7. I don't use 7 here x squared minus 3. Notice that's u now. It's 1 over x squared minus 3. There's in the front the natural log of 7 times, times what? The derivative of this one. And what's the derivative of that? 2x. So you can write that 2x over the natural log of 7 times x squared minus 3. Is that 2x multiplied by the top and the bottom? No, just the top. Just the top. That's a fraction. Anything is over 1, right? Mm -hmm. Multiply the top times the top, the bottom times the bottom. The derivative, log base 13. Of, I don't know, cosecant x. Gonna make sure you know these rules. It's going to be one over, there's the cosecant of x, there's the natural log of 13. What else missing from that? What's not there? You gotta multiply it by the derivative cosecant. Cosecant is negative cosecant of x cotangent x. And notice the good news, the cosecant cancels the cosecant because one is top, one is bottom you end up with negative cotangent of x over the ln of 13. What happens if the x and the a are or the u and the a are switched? Which one? For the other rule. The other rule? I'm not sure which one here. Yeah. Here? Yeah. What happened with them? What do you mean? If, if you switch the u and the a. Switch them? Make, make that like an x? Can't. Oh, okay. Because nope. you don't know what x is. What happens if it's a negative number? Ah. Okay, that's the rest of the rules.